Joe Bob's Thank you. Like me too. Well, <laughs> um, it's some introduction. Uh, welcome, good morning. It's, uh, I'm glad that, uh, that you're all here. I think it's an exciting time for massage. It's, uh, as pointed out earlier, when you're a student, then I think you're just kind of focused on like learning the techniques and the patterns and the things, and you can kind of get absorbed into that. When you start looking to a more broader uh, profession, which hopefully you get from kind of seeing the different paths of everybody this morning, you see what a diverse field this is and how much is out there. You also see, I think, how somewhat young of a profession we are and how much growth that there is out there. And I think over the next 25 years or so, you're really going to see the massage profession take off even bigger than it is now, as much as we talk about it and massage is available. I think it's only going to become more available. And in 25 years or so, I think it's really going to be um, one of the predominant, if not the predominant, sort of health and wellness profession that's out there. So I think it's an exciting time to join it. I would also think it would be exciting here in Vegas. I mean, Vegas has to have more world-class spas in like a mile, a square mile than anywhere in the world. I mean, probably any city of LA and New York and stuff are gonna have a lot of spas too, but nothing is condensed. I mean, you just go down the spa, and when you travel with Linda, our goal is to like hit as many of these as we possibly can, <laughs> which is uh, which is very expensive because they're pricey. But we were at Aria on um, what day before yesterday, and uh, maybe somewhere today. But there's so much Aria, 60 massage rooms, and um, and that, I mean that's not unique. I mean, it's all of the spas going along here, so it's just great with that sort of that world-class massaging that's happening here, and they're expensive, but of course people are expecting a good massage when you're paying. I mean, it was $160 for the base rate of the massage before tip, anything like that. So people are expecting goods. I think when you're here, well, there's the excitement of the possibilities. There's also how do you stand out from the pack when you're going and interviewing, and, uh, and I think this is a great start by like coming to events like this, taking classes from people, never stop learning, and never stop growing with the profession. When I started, it was a hobby, and in many ways, I still consider it a hobby. I'm just lucky enough that I get paid for doing something that I love. But I was training for the LA Marathon. I'm not particularly athletic. I have no business training for a marathon. Uh, any of you who have ever run a marathon knows what kind of a workout it is, but it's one of those things I want to check off the list, but I'd run a marathon, so I was training for it. And I would just, it would do these long 20 mile runs on Saturdays and then I wouldn't be able to walk till about Wednesday. But I saw <laughs> how many people, well, it was true, you'd see a curve coming up and you'd be like, is there any way I don't have to step up on the curve? Um, but other people in my running group were, they were, some of them were doing better. I'm like, what are they doing? And uh, they were getting massages. And I thought, I love massages. But at that point in, uh, this was back in what, like 2002, and I just thought of them as like kind of luxury pampering on your birthday, you get a massage, something like that. I hadn't really thought about it as being therapeutic. And so I went and found a really terrific massage therapist to work on me. And I could go to her on Saturday afternoons after the run and I'd wake up Sunday morning and feel like a new human being. I'd feel fine. That's incredible. How does, how does this work that like she can go and she can just kind of, you know, rub on me, poke on me, all that, I'm fine. And so I'm always very curious about things. So I thought I'm going to take a class. So I just took a class at it. I had no intention of, of it becoming my job or leaving the job that I was doing. I just wanted to learn more about it. But as I did that, I started working on some of my running friends. I started getting referrals. And the next thing you know, I'm doing massage more and more. I met a guy, um, Big Ed, in my massage class who became my business partner and he was doing kind of the same thing he was uh, he played hockey he was a big guy he was like 6'4 and 250 and everything people we'd go to sporting events everybody wanted the big guy because he could kind of pick you up hold you in half spin you around do all these things that nobody else could do but we were we started doing this stuff and so finally we decided to go into business together and it so happened that the school we went to came up for sale and so we're like well, let's buy it and so, which, uh, you know, there maybe should have been a little more thought. <laughs> but it's one of those things in life sometimes, um, 
sometimes if you think about something too much, it will get in your way. And especially any journey that you start or anything that you start new, if you like weigh all the pros and cons and you start, you can talk yourself out of it because anything that you really want in life, it's not easy. And so if you know how hard it's going to be, a lot of times you wouldn't do it. So sometimes you just kind of have to like close your eyes and just take that step and do it. And so despite everybody's uh, opinion otherwise, we bought it, our families, everybody were like, don't touch the massage. He was not doing financially well either. <laughs> it, was, it was in terrible shape. <laughs> and so, but we bought this massage school and sure enough, we worked hard and just kind of blood, sweat and tears for a couple of years. And then I ended up uh, selling it to a larger school, National Holistic Institute out in California. And I became a part of them. They've been around for some 30 years. And so I've been with them now for six years. And it's, uh, it's really grown into great things. And through them, I've gotten out into the massage world. I'm the strategic development manager for them. So I, I'm all focused on the future of massage. With our company, part of what I do is I'm looking at three and five years down the road and where we're going to be as opposed to the right now. So whether it's opening new campuses or trends in the profession or where our curriculum needs to go. I also get to come out here and, um, and meet all of these wonderful people. And it's when I think about the fact that I really haven't been in the massage profession as long as, as some of these uh, others have done. And so I'm just, I kind of have to pinch myself occasionally because again, it feels like a hobby to me and yet I get paid and I do all of these things I also got, um, I sit on the California board, which is the California Massage Therapy Council, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I to like being here with all these people doing all these things, sitting on a state board doing all of that, and I just went to massage school back in 2003, so nine years ago. Um, and every time you say a number, everybody writes, you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, <laughs> <laughs> um, 60 million years. But, uh, but yeah, so it's just, I think the possibilities are endless, and so I encourage you to continue to come to things like this. And also, just like uh, you know, all of us started as massage therapists, um, I think you've gone on to other things, but there's so much to the profession out there, and a lot of these laws are still being written or rewritten or changed. The profession is growing, the industry changes, and I think it's important to stay up on that and to be a part of the profession. And when you're just there and you're massaging in a room, it can be somewhat of a, of a lonely business and you can feel like it's just you and doing your own thing. But when you come here and you connect with other people and you find business tips and you share things, it can be, it can reinvigorate you and it can also open you to the possibilities that are, that are out there. So I really encourage you not to just think that the profession is, um, is some kind of just thing that you can't have any say in or part in or that laws or things are just like written by the man or the regulations or something. You can become and, and volunteer, and you can be on your state board. You can join like the AMTA and become president of the chapter and the people that are involved, and you can really have a say in what's going on in our profession. And it's still new enough that there's a lot of that. So please be coming to these things, and um, hopefully I'll be at a panel here at one of these, and you'll be up there, and I'll be sitting out there <laughs> doing that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you.